day and welcome to the AAU TV Midweek News. And we are coming to you from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities in Accra, Ghana. And my name is Lydia Nyame. With me are... Jiman Madaladem Duchig. And my name is Ajiman Otredako. Now the headlines on higher education. The future of higher education in Africa depends on high-speed internet. And again, pubs and restaurants in COVID-19 cases. And in our health news, exercise during pregnancy may save kids from health problems as adults and also stress from work and social interactions puts women at higher coronary heart disease risk. And in our tech news, Ghana-based IoT Network Hub featured in Forbes 100 Innovations, Inventions and Icons Africa. We're glad you made time to watch us today on AET Midweek News. Don't go anywhere, we'll bring you more of higher education, health news and tech news after this break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to GTP Health and Safety Corner. If you feel like stepping out, remember social distancing. You might just save a life. Rock at home, stay at home, stay safe. Wash your hands with soap under running water. Spaced out but still in touch. Check in on your loved ones and stay safe. GTP Timeless. Welcome back from the break and the World Bank has urged African governments and universities to plan and set benchmarks for broadband internet connectivity to benefit from the global explosion of digital data content for online teaching and research. For broadband internet connectivity to benefit from the global explosion of digital data and content for online teaching and research. This will allow scholars on the continent and their counterparts in the diaspora to establish and maintain vibrant international academic partnerships. According to Dr. Sajita Bashu, the World Bank's education sector manager for Eastern and Southern Africa, most African countries lack affordable and high-speed broadband internet, a significant hurdle for the use of internet technology in education and research. In a study about what it would take to get Africa properly connected, Bashir says available bandwidth varies widely across Africa. Eastern and Southern Africa gets bandwidth in the range of 100 to 1000 megabytes per second. But in Western Central Africa, the range is 10 to 100 megabytes per second, she said. Consider that University of Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso gets 10 megabytes per second for 60,000 students. This means it will only provide uh, 0.16 kilobytes per second per student, which is too low. According to Bashir, the University of Ghana provides about 25 kilobytes per second for students, which means that internet connectivity is around 156 times faster than that of the University of Ouagadougou. Well, that's a report from Africa 54, and clearly high-speed internet has become an integral part of higher education, especially after the emergence of COVID-19. But I want to find out what possibly could be the reasons for African universities having low-speed internet for students. You know, I would say um, African universities, um, one reason is that you know, internet in Africa, I must say, is expensive. So you know it's expensive as compared to the europe and uh, other american countries you know so right now um according to a study by prof aluch mm -hmm. on affordable internet connectivity in africa he said um, she said that these universities pay about 40.50 dollars per kilobyte per second that is per month while some institutions also pay like um, let me say 36 us dollars kilobytes per second but you know with all these monies they pay the internet connectivity they receive are very low mm -hmm. whilst in um, whilst um, in other American countries they pay very little for their internet connectivity but get high um, speed of the internet mm -hmm. you know and I also talk about um, the student aspects you see mostly students even though we are doing online right now students don't basically use the um, data provided for them by the institution for 
their studies. They use it for other stuff. Okay. They end up downloading or let me say streaming high files. That is give in this way it gives the institution a cost. Mm -hmm. So in order for the institution not to bear that cost, they you know, they eventually um, limit the bandwidth for the students to use. But you know, uh, if you listen to other reportage, you'd know that some institutions provide 25 kilobytes per second for students, which can't, which can't do exactly. Anything. So that's where the problem lies. Yes. <laughs> There's a big problem right here in our country, in our continent. Uh, I want to take it from the beginning that we should look out for a massive open online education in Africa. Okay. Some would say that COVID-19 was a solution to this in disguise because when COVID came, mm -hmm. every traditional university, which was so hard pressed with face-to-face -face learning, mm -hmm. saw the need to run something online. Mm -hmm. Now it's becoming the new at attitude mm -hmm. for every university. But before then, we had online institutions. We had open universities who were fully operating online mm -hmm. and in working with data and accessories. But now we find a need that in Africa's future of higher education would be centered around the provision of high speed internet because yes, it is not only universities where people will be attending to, to, to learn by the internet. Mm -hmm. Somebody can be at home and just log on to YouTube and then enjoy a series of courses and also master. Mm -hmm. The same way we can have open universities, we'll have online universities, we'll have virtual ways of learning, both face to face and online. So online will become an integral part of our mm -hmm. lives. Yeah. Why don't we then start investing in high speed internet? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned mm -hmm. why they're not, they're not available. Exactly. What do we d use our budgets for? What do we invest in? Mm -hmm. uh, do you mentioned the fact that the, the university Low provides funds. data and then uh, the student don't use it for? We are t we we, we spent ten to a hundred megabytes per second. Mm -hmm. Cannot even download a movie. <laughs> it will take you a week yeah, to we finish to that. Do that. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at. East Africa spending a hundred to a thousand mega exactly. bytes by, by per second. Mm -hmm. We can do better than this. Mm -hmm. We have not made that intentional effort to invest into data yeah. nationwide. How, how, how much would it cost? I believe the president of Ghana uh, promised the country to provide data connectivity all over the country. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for that to happen. But what we are saying is that the future of our country is driving technological and you have to invest towards it. Yes. What policy have we done? We are still, on, on, in terms of policy, we still have investors who are still relentless towards mm -hmm. online learning because exactly. they want to go back to face-to-face, -to -face, yes. which will not happen. <laughs> yes, That's because true. online will save costs, online will bring access. There are so many advantages that online uh, education has or wills over face-to-face. -face. So, well, we should understand that the future is um, online, the future mm -hmm. means data, high-speed internet, so we should, we should invest into it with the telcos and government try and then strike a better deal mm -hmm. so we can have data cheap for students to use to learn. That's okay. the way to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, I, I was glad Jamal mentioned that some universities lack funds. Mm -hmm. And since this whole uh, reportage was coming from the World Bank, because they were the ones urging African universities and then okay. government to make sure that happens. I want to know if the World Bank is offering any form of support to ensure this happens. The World Bank has always supported uh, countries all over Africa mm -hmm. with initiatives. Mm -hmm. So if the World Bank is advising or mm -hmm. is urging that we see the future mm -hmm. and invest in high-speed internet, mm -hmm. the World Bank knows what they're talking about. It means that African governments should prioritize. We have left education to be just face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. We should look beyond that, that it goes beyond face-to-face -face and that online learning has come to stay. So if there's any policy to that effect, it, sh it should be enacted. But we haven't heard anything. So the World Bank is giving us a wake-up call, just as uh, the African Union Commission but gave you know, us a wake-up uh, call. Just a wake-up call is not enough, because mm. if indeed there are universities who are having financial difficulties, then yes, the wake-up call is in, but they can't actually implement it. Well, for them, they are just uh, a policy uh, institution for eight ways. They are, the World Bank can't force any country in Africa That's to... That's why support. Exactly. You know, the, the, I would say that there is... Um, an initiative World Bank is working on, according to research, is called the Digital Economy Initiative for okay. Africa. Mm -hmm. And, you know, their ultimate goal is to achieve, um, their ultimate goal is to get an affordable high-speed broadband internet by the end of 2030. Mm -hmm. okay. But then, I can't really tell how they are working towards that, but this is an initiative that has been there for 
some months now and i'm sure with this um, initiative and with their ultimate goal i think they should you know they are helping this is an initiative that will help with the internet connectivity yeah. okay like the un is um, promoting the un SDG goals mm -hmm. they they can only advocate and do more education but who needs to take this up it's the government, it's the government yeah. so government of ghana government of uh any country in Africa mm -hmm. should understand the future of higher education in Africa, not to be face to face. We've gone beyond that. It's mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. So now, policy wise, investment wise, we should look to that direction, which will help us. Okay, well, so on higher education, South Africa's University of Pretoria has recorded 115 positive cases of COVID 19 in the past three weeks with pubs and restaurants in the vicinity, uh, in the Hatfield area of the university been viewed as prime suspects for the pockets of inf uh, infections surging at the institution. The University of Pretoria in South Africa has recorded 115 positive cases of COVID-19 in the past three weeks with pubs and restaurants in the vicinity of the university in the Hatfield area being viewed as prime suspect for the pockets of infection surging at the institution. University spokesperson Rikos Delpot said the university was complying with the COVID-19 health protocols and following the regulations. It is suspected that the virus was contracted off campus at one or more of the pubs and restaurants regularly frequented by students in the Hatfield area. Contact tracing is underway and all relevant authorities notified, he said. The university is working closely with them to implement all necessary precautions to prevent the spread of the virus. The rise of infections was concerning, said Higher Health, an agency mandated by the Department of Higher Education to safeguard students' health and well-being in higher learning institutions. The outbreak across some of the institutions are extremely worrying and reminds us of the brutal second wave that just passed South Africa, said CEO higher health. Well, COVID-19 cases surging in South Africa, but you know, if indeed cases are, are, are being traced to pubs and restaurants, then what can be done to reduce the number of infections? Because clearly there are no uh, restrictions on movements when it comes to universities. You see, I would say, um, I would say the government did wrong by not closing the pubs in the first place because universities are not primary schools. You know, they have the freedom to go where they want to go and move freely according to their rights. So I think if the pubs were closed and according to, you know, students, we are old enough to take decisions on our, on our own. So as us at now, if you are a student, you in this COVID-19 era, you still don't see the need to stay home or to stay in your own room and mm -hmm. adhere to precautions then seriously. I can't really tell what is going on because even though the government did not close pubs and the rest, you the individual, you are old enough to decide, you know, that I'm not supposed to go to these places at this point in time with what is happening in Ghana. But Let you, me say you know, in Africa. South Africa uh, in particular has been on lockdown for so many months. I mean, like, it was just until recently that recently. things started getting back to normal. Better. Uh, pubs, restaurants, and what have you were all closed. Mm -hmm. The question is, until when can they be closed? You know, uh, the investors were, were, were opened, right? Yes. To go back to school. Exactly. Yes. But I remember that from a re reference to Dr. Fauci in the USA, mm -hmm. mentioned that some of the places that COVID can be fast spread is these enclosed areas, mm -hmm. the clubs, the pubs, the restaurants because they are enclosed with the air condition. Mm -hmm. And when some money, people speak louder at places. Mm -hmm. yes. Everybody can talk yeah. at that places. So mm -hmm. if you're on text, you're talking, I'm talking, I'm laughing, I'm shouting, perhaps I'm spitting out something or mm -hmm. I'm just bringing out something that will be in the air, mm -hmm. which you can also inhale. Or exactly. Sure. And mm -hmm. that is where we can spread COVID-19 because it's an enclosed area. Mm -hmm. So every club or pub, restaurants, everywhere in the world was advised that you close it down. In Ghana, I believe that these places are, are, are still not allowed to operate. They are not allowed to operate. That until is until the president comes to give his final. So they don't operate. I think so. You, well, you unless think so? In Ghana, they are opening illegally. But the last <laughs> address he gave, he never mentioned that he has lifted a ban on these areas. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, if you are going by the book, then yes. Mm -hmm. but so, so if anybody is running by then, it's at their own cost. 
Because if they are caught, that's punishable by law. But for these places in the university, a university owning a pub for students, it's not a pub, it's not a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I don't see why they should be have that domain over the law. I don't know what the rules are in South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, what the uh, uh, Cyril mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. But a university that owns a pub is still under the law to be closed because it is mm -hmm. a, a place we can spread COVID-19 yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. and I, don't, I, I, I find it so surprising that these students were able to find that place operating and now they've realized mm -hmm. it. But I believe that in South Africa it was banned. Mm -hmm. But why should the school be operating in that way? But since we've seen that it's according due to that, then measures to be taken that even the university's public restaurant should be closed. Okay, you know, this situation clearly affects the mental health of students because, I mean, the moment someone in a particular lecture hall uh, uh, gets infected, People get scared and then their mental health is attacked. But I want to find out to what extent do these students adhere to the measures in the first place? You know, in the first place, um, the investors should be enclosed. If, if you can't control it, mm -hmm. then you don't open at all. Mm -hmm. But if you find the need to open, then it means you are ready to control everything mm -hmm. so you prevent the consequences. Mm -hmm. Now, we find a slack in working with the protocols because mm -hmm. if they were, this wouldn't happen. So, to what extent these students would obey the protocols as, as an individual then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you choose to wear your nose mask, that that's okay for you. If you choose to go to a place that COVID can be fast spread, mm -hmm. that's your own risk. But you, you know, I think um, the, the student w would only adhere to the precaution in front of authorities. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. And then outside authorities, they are on their own. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. they choose so, to. Which is why I agree with that, German. In the first place, perhaps school shouldn't have been open. Yeah, yeah, shouldn't yeah, have been allowed to go in the open, first yeah. place. Because yes. there's, there, there's just nothing wrong with online. Mm -hmm. we, we have lectures perfectly on online. We conduct exams. So yeah. there was just no need for students to return to school, exactly. especially in a time like this. Well, it's, it's relative. It's relative. That's true. Moving on to our health news, exercise during pregnancy may let mothers reduce their children's chances of developing diabetes and other metabolic disease later in life, researchers suggest. A study in lab mines has found that maternal exercise during pregnancy prevented the transmission of metabolic disease from an obese parent, either mother or father, to the child. If the findings hold true in humans, it will have huge implications for helping pregnant women ensure their children live the healthiest lives possible, the researchers report in a new scientific paper. This means that one day soon, a woman's first trip to the hospital after conceiving might include a description for an exercise program from the doctor. The good news is that Maternal exercise during pregnancy prevented a host of disease changes that affect the working of the offspring genes. Maternal exercise, they determine completely block the negative effects of their mother's or father's obesity in the offspring. The results, they say, provide the first evidence that maternal exercise during pregnancy can prevent the transmission of metabolic disease from parents to child. This is really interesting. Um, but do you think pregnancy, let me say exercise and, and pregnancy should go hand in hand, looking at how both of them, you know, bring in some form of difficulty? Um, personally, I think yes, because exercise and pregnancy, I mean, exercise helps pregnant women in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, let, let's talk about how it keeps pregnant women fit. Okay. It keeps them in shape because there are some women that the moment they get pregnant, they just lose everything. Mm -hmm. But if, if, you, if you are pregnant and then you take exercise as uh, something you do on a daily basis, you, you realize that, yes, you are pregnant, but you're still in shape. And let, let's also talk about how uh, it helps the lungs your heart and then other blood vessels these are basically the main organs that holds your body so if you're pregnant and then uh, exercising would keep you that healthy of mm -hmm. course and i think exercise, exercise goes hand in hand with pregnancy uh, so you know i would like to share my experience mm -hmm. you know sure. uh, pregnant woman in, in africa mm -hmm. uh, basically you know if you're pregnant in africa your family mm -hmm. well now you become a queen exactly. mm -hmm. at home so you don't <laughs> You don't do anything. You don't wash. You don't in do anything. In some African yeah, Your homes. mom will, will have to come to you yeah. and serve you, um, <laughs> feed you and everything. Food and everything. Then you relax. You just eat. You're just eating. Mm -hmm. So you, you deliver. Yeah. But, and then you, you grow obese. 
mm -hmm. during that time. Yes. But I think we've seen uh, a paradigm shift in that, in that lifestyle mm -hmm. where women see the need to still be active and mm -hmm. not look different. You know, you can transform yeah, exactly. to something else and then come back to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, exactly. you, it's either you remain different forever or you go back or to your old state. Back, yeah. But now I think we're seeing a whole new generation of women who understand that if you're pregnant, it is still not a reason for you to lay back. Mm -hmm. You still have to do many things, walk a lot, exercise, exactly. like what we see on the screens. So, whoa, we can now see that if you're a woman, then you must consider um, adding more value to yourself mm -hmm. in terms of exercising and doing more movements. Okay. So you keep yourself in shape. It okay. also helps. Exactly. But you know, you I, I would want to add that the exercise shouldn't be an intense one. intense one. Because of the pregnancy, it is, it is advisable to just adhere, uh, stick to uh, just and a cool moderate and exercise. And yeah. But would you say um, pregnancy should be the only activity recommended for pregnant women? Hey, I'm, I'm saying, do, exercise do you think exercise should be the only recommendation for pregnant women? Ajman, I'll leave that to you. You, you know, you <laughs> know um, I mean, everybody needs exercise. It's very important. But for yeah. this particular study, Mm -hmm. uh, it helps the baby from so many problems. Exactly. Uh, you know, according to the video we saw, this lady is doing an exercise mainly about the, the pelvic area. Yes. Because at the point of labor, mm -hmm. she would need to be doing a lot of pushing. Mm -hmm. And she would need to work it through the pelvic side. So imagine if you've done that in exercise, how flexible how would it be? Mm -hmm. That's a good way. Mm -hmm. So kudos to her. Kudos to everyone out there who is doing this. And to any woman out there. That you should also try and do I'll some try. exercise in your waist part exactly. to help you have a free, uh, an easy way. An easy way. Yeah, sure. Okay, so moving on. Psychological stress typically resulting from difficulty coping with challenging environments may work to put women at higher risk of developing coronary heart disease, according to a study. Do you feel like you're on overload? In just a few days, we've got Thanksgiving. With that is the stress and the pressure of preparing the perfect meal for relatives who don't always get along with each other. Then after that, Black Friday, the race to get all the holiday shopping done, finding the perfect gift, wrapping it up, and then hope that it's going to be appreciated. Add into that the subject that never goes away. Where's the money to do it all? Well, you mix it all together, and it's the season of stress. Are you ready for breakfast, little hungry man? Mommy loves Work starts early for Jackie Lazarique. My first children come at 6.45. And ends late. The last one leaves between 5.30 and 5.45. It's very busy. And that isn't the end of her work day. After the children get picked up, I teach a rope. It's become the new normal for Lazarique, who, like thousands of others, went through life-changing events during the past six years. My husband um, had a job change. And the most difficult blow. We lost our son at a very young age. He was 21. And that was very tough. Like many women, Jackie was served a huge helping of stress. I remember times when I would just go through the grocery store and I would look at people with a full cart of groceries and I'm like, I'd be jealous. <laughs> Psychologist Stephanie Lippman says Jackie is similar to many women who are on overload. Women do tend to shoulder more stress than men. However, it's women tend to cope with it in a different way than men do. Whereas men tend to have more of a fight and flight response. Women tend to have more of a nurturing personality. And so when they face stress, they do what we call tend or befriend. Dr. Lipman also points out that the financial stress Jackie experienced is one of the most common problems women deal with right now. How to cope? Lipman has five suggestions. First, are you healthy? Are you eating? Are you sleeping well? Getting exercise. Second, take time for yourself. Do what we would call a healthy escape, and that might mean a mini vacation. Next, identify your stress. Know where it's coming from. Even keep a journal to chronicle your stress. Learn to identify the patterns of what is stressing you out. Fourth, look at your relationships. It's very important to examine the quality of your relationships. Number five, know when it's too much. Seeking medical help is important. It's helpful to get help from a professional to learn how to reframe your thoughts, reframe your emotions. Jackie found that putting her stress relievers to work every day helped as she and her husband put their lives back together. It's good. I have um, two wonderful grandchildren. My husband is working 
part-time. Things have settled down. One other stress buster, Jackie said she's tried to focus on the positive things that came out of the challenges that she and her family faced, such as continuing to embrace some of the cutbacks they made. That's right, they still stick to them today. Roxanne Stein. Um, that was from WPTV Channel 5 News. Interesting right there. Um, what, I would say, what do you think can reduce or eliminate the risk of coronary heart disease in women? Let me put it that way. Well, I, I will st I'll start by saying that the story identifies stress as a major contributing factor to coronary mm -hmm. um, heart, disease, heart disease, which is a very, very strange killer because, I mean, the more you depress yourself mm -hmm. or the more you stretch yourself up with so many things around you, yes. you see yourself the better to let blood flow. Yes. You know, um, I want to bring it down. The psychological stress, physical stress, mm -hmm. emotional stress. Now, okay. These kinds of stress are very important. Now, the way we manage these kinds of stress has a tendency of putting a whole burden of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think about in each day, yes. either good or bad, contribute to your well-being well in the whole self. If you have so much issues to think about in a day mm -hmm. that you cannot even do, your mind thinking about things you can't achieve is one stress on its own. Mm -hmm. um, you being in a relationship and things not working out, each and every day there's a quarrel, there's a problem. You feel there's not working out. It's also a whole stress on its own. Okay. Because you're not getting what you need from the other partner. Other partner. And then physically, you're working, going to the market, cleaning, doing the grocery, doing the dishes, everything that's physically you can do the body has its own capacity that you can do. Mm -hmm. If you do beyond it, you work it. Yeah. So physically, you are, you're stressed, mentally, you emotionally. Stressed. And that is a whole package mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. heart disease you have right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the lesson I think we, we saw and the advice is that take your time out of many things exactly. mm -hmm. and get the best out of your relationships. It's very important. Yes. Your heart is where your blood pumps to. It means it's, it's, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It has to be in good position. Okay. If there's something affecting your heart, mm -hmm. either being you're not getting love or care from people you think you should get love from, that is a whole stress on its own. On its own. And also what you do in a day, you know, um, your activities, try and cut them. Mm -hmm. Because the more you do so much work, mm -hmm. put so much pressure, pressure on what you can do you. for yourself. Mm -hmm. That is a whole enough to give you a coronary heart disease. So I think the advice is clear to everyone out there to manage the activities and what they think about. Okay. Exactly, you know, sometimes stress is uncontrollable. It just comes in. So once you're stressed, you just need to focus on what would ease, ease you, you, what would calm you down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different with different people. For exactly. some people, listening to music alone, that's the magic. Yeah. Yeah. For some people, sleeping, that's the magic. Mm -hmm. For some people, taking a few days off work, that's the magic. Yes, so you just okay. need to know yourself yes, and so. then you do what helps you because trust me, you wouldn't want to end up with a heart disease. You sure. wouldn't want to end up with the heart disease. We'll go for a quick break and when we come back, we'll give you more of science and technology news. Welcome to GTP Health and Safety Corner. If you feel like stepping out, remember social distancing. You might just save a life. Rock at home, stay at home, stay safe. Wash your hands with soap and the running water. Spaced out but still in touch. Check in on your loved ones and stay safe. GTP Timeless. The Ghana-based tech community, Internet of Things, IoT Network Hub has been acknowledged by Forbes as one of the 100 innovations, inventions and icons from Africa 2020. A Ghana-based tech community, Internet of Things, Network Hub, has been acknowledged by Forbes as one of the 100 innovations, inventions and icons from Africa in 2020. The company's umbrella term Hacker V, which consists of three different inventions, was number 11 out of the 30 inventions featured in the 100 annual issue of the report. CEO of the West African IoT Network Hub, Joshua Opoku Ajiman Otu, took up the challenge to create innovations in the wake of the deadly COVID-19 coronavirus, which is plaguing his homeland Ghana. These were intended to reduce the spread of the virus. Each creation was distinct and served a separate purpose. 
First is a touchless washing bucket that works through a foot mechanism. Ajiman explained in an interview with Forbes that what we noticed about public washing buckets that came with tabs attached is that you had to use your hands to open the tab and when you finish, you would have to close it yourself. So this could be a medium for the virus spread. And this medium, the creation of the touchless washing bucket, and this medium inspired the creation of the touchless washing bucket. The company also manufactured a reusable face mask using 3D printing and from locally sourced materials. The final invention was an artificial intelligence home system that allows users to control appliances from their mobile phones. The system we came up with helps you control your lighting system and switches, especially in public spaces, to avoid these devices more than is needed, so we have to create an app stated. The CEO further revealed that inspiration from this creation was sourced from the community and the need to protect the people around us. There we have it in technology news. We believe we hope to have more of such hubs in town to exactly. help the youth gain more skills and also my employability to make life exactly. easier in Africa. Yeah. Exactly. I, I must say it's an, it's an amazing invention. Now that is all for the news. And in wrapping up, let us take a quick recap of our headlines on higher education. The future of higher education in Africa depends on high-speed internet. And again, pubs and restaurants blame for surge in COVID-19 cases of students. And in our health news, exercise during pregnancy may save kids from health problems as adults and also stress from work and social interactions puts women at higher coronary heart disease risk. In our tech news, Ghana-based IoT network have featured in Forbes 100 Innovations, Inventions and Icons Africa. Thank you very much for staying with AAU TV News as we continue to inform, educate and entertain. My name is Lydia Nyame. And I am Jimai Madaladam Duche. My name is Ajiman Ochudaku and thank you very much for your time. Have a nice day. Bye.